Hi, my name is Betsy, and I'm a bereavement counselor with Hospice Savannah. Welcome to our story time. If you've been to one of our story times before, welcome back. If this is your first time, I'm glad you're here. I hope you enjoy. Today's story time is brought to you by the word woeful. Now the definition of the word woeful is involving or bringing sadness or grief. So the story we're gonna read today is about a group of children who are having to go through kind of a hard time. And the story is called Cry Heart But Never Break by Glenn Ringfed and illustrated by Charlotte Party. And here's the book. It's a very nice book, even though it sounds like a very sad subject. In the far north, in a small snug house, four children lived with their beloved grandmother. A kindly woman, she had cared for them for many years. Now she had a visitor. Look, that's their house. Not wishing to frighten the children, the visitor had left his scythe outside the door. All the same, they knew that it was death. Nell's the oldest and his sister Sonia closed their eyes, heavy with sorrow. Casper, who was younger, tried to ignore the visitor. Just ignored him like this. But Leah, the youngest, who was always getting in trouble, stared straight at death. There they are at the kitchen table. In the quiet, the children could hear their grandmother upstairs, breathing with the same raspy breaths as the figure at the table. They knew death had come for her and that time was short. There's the grandmother. Do you see the picture on the wall of their grandma and grandpa? She looked like a sweet lady, didn't she? Since everyone knows death's only friend is night, that's kind of sad. The children quickly made a plan. They would keep death away from their grandmother by giving him coffee all through the night. Well, that would definitely keep him awake, that's for sure. At dawn, he would have no choice but to leave without her. So every time Death emptied his cup, Nels would ask, more coffee, sir? And Death would nod. Death loved his coffee strong and black like the night. And he was happy to sit and rest for a while. There's Nels pouring the coffee for Death. Time passed. Finally, death was ready. He placed his bony hand over his cup to signal no more. Then Leah, who had been watching death all night, reached out and took his hand. Oh, death, she said, our grandmother is so dear to us. Why does she have to die? Some people say death's heart is as dead and black as a piece of coal. But that's not true. Beneath his inky cloak, Death's heart is as red as the most beautiful sunset and beats with great love of life. There's Leah talking to Death, trying to convince him. 
Must be hard for death, I would think. Death wanted to help the children understand, so he said, I would like to tell you a story. In a strong, sweet voice, he began to speak. Once upon a time, so long ago that only I can remember, there lived two brothers. One was called Sorrow, the other Grief. Woeful and sad, they moved up and down their gloomy valley. They went slowly and heavily because they never looked up. They never saw through the shadows to the top of the hills. Look, that's their house and those are the two brothers. They seem pretty sad. At the top of those hills, there lived two sisters, joy and delight. They were bright and sunny and their days were full of happiness. The only shadow was their sense that something was missing. They didn't know what, but they felt they couldn't fully enjoy their happiness. Death saw Leah nodding and said, I think you can guess what happened next. There's the two girls. One day the brothers and the sisters met. Sorrow fell instantly in love with the light and she with him. It was the same for grief and joy. Each couldn't live without the other. Looks like they're having fun, doesn't it? After their double wedding and great celebration, the two couples moved into neighboring houses halfway up and halfway down the hill. This way, the distance to their old homes was the same. They all lived to be very old. When the time came to die, Grief and joy did so on the same day, as did sorrow and delight. Their happiness together had been so great that they couldn't live with each other without each other, even a day. There they are by their new houses. That's a good story, said Nels. It is the same with life and death. Death said, what would life be worth if there were no death? Who would enjoy the sun if it never rained? Who would yearn for day if there were no night? The children were sure, weren't sure they had understood death fully, but somehow they knew he was right. There's death explaining it to the children. At last, Death stood up. It was time to go upstairs. A line of pale gray was edging away the night. Casper wanted to stop Death, but Nels held him back. No, Nels said. Life is moving on. This is how it must be. Moments later, the children heard the upstairs window open. Then, in a voice somewhere between a cry in a whisper, Death said, fly away, soul, fly, fly away. The children hurried upstairs. They tiptoed into their grandmother's room. Grandmother had died. The curtains were blowing in the gentle morning breeze. Looking at the children, Death said quietly, cry heart but never break. Let your tears of grief and sadness help begin a new life. Then he was gone. There are the children sitting by their grandmother.
ever after, whenever the children opened a window, they would think of their grandmother. And when the breeze caressed their faces, they would feel her touch. Look, he's looking out the window and his grandmother's spirit is standing by him. In the years that followed, the children lived with their joy and their sorrow, but they always remembered death's words and took great comfort from their hearts, which grieved and cried, but never broke. That is the end of our story today. I hope you've enjoyed it. Do you have memories that you have of your family's traditions? Would you like to share them or anything that you have felt after the death of a loved one? Get an adult to give us a call. We're here to help. Our number is 912-303-9900. And I hope you're well. Stay safe.